Around 300 trucks of food and other materials cross into Niger from Burkina Faso, with many arriving in the capital Niami on Sunday. The convoy of truck departed from Burkina Faso, the last open border with Niger since the West African regional bloc imposed sanctions after mutinous soldiers overthrew the country's presidents last month. For a long time, no trucks have been able to arrive through the Burkina corridor. But with the security operations on this corridor, done jointly by Burkina and Niger armies, we got this first convoy, and we hope for more in the days to come. But the route between Burkina Faso and Niger is aligned with jihadi groups, making it dangerous to drive and requiring military escorts from both armies. I find difficult for the road in the road. The uh, grace of God, the police, uh, the soldiers help us to come and reach here. Uh, it's very, very bad. Why is it so bad? Uh, because for the, uh, this, uh, what do you call Boko Haram in the road, you can't take road really uh, early and low unless escort. Uh, the soldiers help us to come and reach here. It's good. According to security sources, around 100 civilians have been killed in the violence in this so-called tri-border region between Burkina Faso, Mali and Niger, which is regularly the scene of deadly jihadist attacks, notably by the Islamic State in the Great Sahara. So as a tension between ECOWAS and Niger unfolded, the people in Niger do not have basic supplies anymore or the ones they had is running out. Because ECOWAS placed a blockade on the country. You know, these are the things that when you hear, you ask yourself, how can a fellow African be doing this to a fellow African? You might not like the military junta. You might not appreciate coups in the continent or in the region. But don't you think that by putting sanctions and blockade in place, you are starving the common people? I think I have said this before, that sanctions and blockade do not affect the politicians, do not affect the military junta. They will survive. They will do whatever it takes for them to have something to eat. It won't affect them. They have so much money that they can buy whatever it costs they will buy. But those who are severely affected are the people in the grassroots, are those commoners in the street. So for ECOWAS to be saying that whatever they are doing is for the people of Niger, whereby their actions are hurting the people in Niger severely, it's kind of like uh, an insane statement. How can someone say that whatever they've done was to your benefit or whatever they are doing is to your benefit, but the things they are doing are negatively affecting you? You are severely impacted negatively by their actions and decisions. How can those actions and decisions be to your benefit? How can? It's really, really crazy. So I want us to get through this article on the, to see what it says. So let's see. The headline reads, Hundreds of trucks with food and essentials which near me. Around 300 trucks of food and other materials crossed into Niger from Burkina Faso, with many arriving the capital, Niame, Sunday, according to the regional custom official. The convoy of trucks departed from Burkina Faso, the last open border with Niger, since the West African regional bloc imposed sanctions after mortinous soldiers overthrew the country's president last month. But the route between Burkina Faso and Niger is lined with jihadi groups, making it dangerous to deliver and requiring military escort from both armies. Niger's coup 
was seen by the international community and ECOWAS as one too many, and in addition to threatening a military invasion, the bloc has imposed severe economic and travel sanctions. In the first six months of 2023, attacks on civilians were 49% lower than in the first six months of 2022, and the number of deaths 16% lower. According to the NGO, ACLED, which records the victims of conflicts around the world, Western observers and partners, notably France, a privileged ally of the ousted regime, which still has 1,500 troops in Niger, have highlighted this encouraging result. This improvement is partly attributed to the strategy implemented by Mr. Mbazum, the only one of its kind in the Sahel to combat jihadist groups. Why the military regimes in neighboring Niger and Burkina Faso are carrying out anti-terrorist operations that are accused of taking a heavy toll on civilian populations, Niger has opted for a policy of extending a helping hand. Peace agreements between communities, development projects, negotiations with leaders of the armed groups, a strategy considered promising and appreciated by Western partners, but criticized in Niger, particularly within the army. So what they are saying here is that the deposed leader, Mohamed Bazoum, was making far more progress before he was ousted. That even though Mali and Burkina Faso took the option of going head to head with the insurgency groups and try to subdue them, Mohamed Mbazoum took a whole different approach of negotiating with the jihadist groups or with the fractional groups that were, that were fighting against the government and also gave them some, some autonomy. And this helped in the reduction of attacks in the country. And the military just ousting the president wasn't really a good idea. That's what they are saying. But the thing they focus more is about the fighting. What about the development of Niger? Why are all these people fighting? We need to look into that. Why a country like Niger, that is rich in uranium, don't have enough power in the country? Is anyone talking about that? Why is France harvesting everything from Niger and giving little or nothing back in return? Why aren't we talking about that? And why is France so intertwined with the policies in Niger? And why is France refusing to pull out the ambassador and their troops from Niger? Why is nobody talking about that? So all these things must be looked into. And if ECOWAS really cared about the people of Niger as they claim to be, they would have understood by now that the sanctions they put in place is hurting the common man in the street. That the military junta's are not going to give power. That, that, that deal is sealed. But the common people in the street are hurting, and they could be helped if ECOWAS uplift sanctions. We, the Africans, must learn to look after our own. We, the Africans, must devise a way to resolve our own issues in Africa. We, the Africans, mustn't always run to the West for every single problem we get. It was the same thing I said about Nana Akufado of Ghana, someone whom I really, really revered, someone whom I think has done a fantastic job for Ghana and for Ghanaians. 
But when he went to the African American summit and start spreading all sorts of things about how Burkina Faso has invited Wagner Group to their country, which, in his own opinion, is a threat to Ghana's security and interests, I said it was wrong because that wasn't the forum or the place to discuss a problem like this. This could have been discussed bilaterally. Ghana, Burkina Faso, meet and dialogue this out. Or better still, the AU should have been the best place for them to resolve something like this, not America. We Africans must learn to be responsible enough to carry on our own responsibilities. We cry for equality. We say we want to be treated as equal and as equals, but we are not ready to shoulder our own responsibilities. Remember, with great power comes great responsibility. If you want a place on the table, if you want to be ever treated like an equal, do things that will let people know you are really what you want them to see you as. Don't just say things and don't do anything. You have to do something. But to you guys out there, share your thoughts and opinions in the comment section below. Do you think that the coup in Niger was unnecessary? That Mohamed Mbazoum was doing so well for the country and the coup or the military juntas have done something worse than good for the Nigerians? Share your thoughts and opinions with us in the comment section below because like always, we love hearing what you have to say. And also, don't forget to like this video, share this video, follow our Facebook page, and most importantly, subscribe to this channel because little bit of good we, like the one you're doing just now, help us a lot and we shall forever be grateful to you. So thank you very much for doing just that. And like always, see you in the next one.